Good evening, everybody. We'll start with our session. Yesterday, we have started discussing about the types of mental diseases. Before that, while explaining the mental diseases, he explains over there, the way you treat the corporeal diseases in the similar manner, you have to look towards the mental diseases because boy, body and mind, they are not two different entities. In fact, they are one and same. And that's why the way you treat the corporeal or physical disorders in a similar manner, you have to treat the mental disorders. The approach should be one and same. But still, for the purpose of treating them, it is so much necessary to understand exactly the varieties of mental diseases. And in the aphorism number 215, he started explaining about the first variety of mental disease and few aspects of those we have discussed in yesterday's lecture. The first variety which is which he explains is that the corporeal diseases disappears. In fact, disappears means it, it gets suppressed and then the mental diseases, disorder, diseases develops. It is the voyage from the corporeal physical aspects to the dynamic mind, mental aspects a grave disorder. Even though the physical disorder is grave, but when it turns to the dynamic plane in, while in, the, in, in the expression, it becomes rather difficult to cure. And these are nothing but the one-sided diseases, type of one-sided diseases, because mental diseases are also one-sided diseases. It reflects only one side of the human being, that is the mental aspect. And those are more dangerous. The insanity which has been developed after the suppression of the some liver troubles or liver problem or some lung pathology and when it gets decreased and if a mental disorder develops, that type of variety comes under the sphere of this first type of mental diseases and rather they are the part and parcel of the Sora only. During Hanumanian time, it was purely Sora. Now we get that as a mixed mathematic picture. But still, the obsessive compulsive disorder, the paranoid schizophrenia, or deep seated depression, or anxiety neurosis, such varieties of the disorders, which generally comes under the sphere of this first type of mental disease. And these are the products of the suppressed corporeal diseases or suppressed physical disorder. It turns directly from physical to the mental plane and these are most difficult to treat. So that's what we have discussed up to the aphorism number 216. Let us go ahead with the 217, what he wants to explain. <clears throat> aphorism 217. In these diseases, we must be very careful to make ourselves acquainted with the whole of the phenomenon. Both those belonging to the corporeal symptoms and also, indeed particularly, those appertaining to the accurate apprehension of the precise character of the chief symptoms of the peculiar and always predominating state of mind and disposition in order to discover, for the purpose of extinguishing the entire disease, among the remedies whose pure effects are known, a homeopathic medicinal pathogenetic force, that is to say, a remedy, which in its list of symptoms displays with the greatest possible, possible similarity, not only the corporeal morbid symptoms present in the case of the disease before us, but especially these mental and emotional states. So now, how to approach and how to treat those mental disorders? The approach he explains over there. So aphorism number 270 deals with how to go ahead with such types of disorders. If a patient of OCD comes in your OPD, what should be your approach? Or if a patient of paranoid schizophrenia comes in your OPD, what should be your approach? If a patient of depression comes to your OPD, what should be your approach? All those things matter a lot. Because, because here you have to go on listening, understanding, perceiving, many things comes into play. Today I have very good case. 
referred by a one physician. She was under psychiatric treatment. She was under physician's treatment. She was under the uh, homeopathic treatment since last two, three years. And she is having a tremendous anxiety neurosis with a depression. Last one month, she said that she was just weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping on. There were lots of fears in her mind. Lots of fears about present state, lots of fears about future life, then confusion of the mind, what to do and what not to do, and lot of things. She explained everything, but it was necessary to listen her quietly. Because unless and until you listen them, you cannot understand exactly the state of disposition. In her case, after two hours of case taking, we got very clear-cut picture of a sepia over there. There were many rubrics which were highlighted in that case. And all those rubrics denoting only and only remedy the sepia. So here, you have to match a right remedy. In her case, there were symptoms like indifference to everything. She used to love many things. She has lost that interest. She has aversion to a sexual contact since last two, three months. Absolutely. She, she, um, she, she becomes so indifferent that she even considers that um, she never feels happy even in uh, happiest events or even in sad events. Nothing happened to her. She, she was just brooding over the things. Her face was absolutely greasy. The body was absolutely weak, shriveled. And she says that I don't have a strength to do anything. She was in a poor state. She was just narrating her whole state with a sad, depressed mood. So everything which was denoting the sepia state, we repertorize each and every rubric and it found to be one and same remedy over there. And that is what is the so what ultimately you have to find it out in such types of cases? You have to find it out the state of disposition and mind. So the, here he explains, in these diseases we must be very careful to make ourselves acquainted with the whole of the phenomenon. Whole of the phenomenon is very important. You have to go on asking all the details and best thing is to listen. Listening gives you many aspects about it. Listening gives you a different aspect about it. Both these both those belonging to the corporeal symptoms and also indeed particularly those appertaining to the accurate apprehension of the precise character of the chief symptom. Appertaining means cha sambandha asne, ekadya goshti cha sambandha asne, appertaining. Apprehension manje akalan hon. Acquainted when you are So what he is saying, you must go on finding it out what corporeal symptoms were there are already taken into consideration all the corporeal symptoms along with the mental state. So exact precise character of the chip symptoms of the peculiar and always predominating state of mind and disposition in order to discover for the purpose of extinguishing the entire disease, among the remedies whose pure effects are known, a homeopathic medicinal pathogenetic force, that is to say, a remedy which in its list of symptoms displays the greatest possible similarity, not only to the corporeal morbid symptoms present in the case of the disease before us, but especially this mental and emotional state. So both things you have to make. You have to match the corporeal symptoms of the patient. Corporeal means related with the physique, related with the body and the mental and emotional state of the mind. Both things carries a great importance to make your totality a concrete totality. And on the basis of that concrete totality, you have to find it out exact remedy from your list of medicines from the remedy. You have to match a remedy which has greatest resemblance to the case. And then that remedy will work as a curative remedy in that patient. So this is too important. Second important thing in such cases, 
you have to decide regarding the potency selection. Here in today's case, that depression case or anxiety neurosis case, I have selected sepia in one impotency because it was need of the time. She was in such a deep depression. She said, doctor, I feel why, why to lie? I want to make suicide. She has a five years child. Still, she explains about that. She talks about that. Uh, your remedy should work fast. You have to match the susceptibility. You have to match the mental aspect, emotional aspect. So I have selected high potency, LM pot uh, 1M potency, and I have given the three doses. So it is not only just matching the remedy. It is the matching potency also. That matters a lot. So if you select right potency, then it will definitely going to work and it will switch on. At the end of consultation, she was, at the start of consultation, she was weeping and weeping. At the end of the consultation, she was happy enough when she left, left the place. She was, in fact, smiling. This is the importance of listening and perceiving. So I have, I have done even a psychotherapy. That is also one of the parts. But psychotherapy will not bring that patient out unless and until you choose a right remedy in such first variety of cases, uh, first type of mental diseases. Psychotherapy will not going to work. It, it may be sometimes palliative, but it never works in first variety. If the OCD is there, if the uh, depression is there, if the paranoid schizophrenia is there, no, there will be no effect of the psychotherapy. So, what he explains exactly how to approach, you have to approach considering the whole totality, including the corporeal symptoms. And then he turns towards the 280. What he says regarding 280, yes. To this collection of symptoms belongs in the first place the accurate description of all the phenomena of the previous so-called corporeal diseases. This is before it degenerated into a one-sided increase of the psychical symptom and became a disease of mind and disposition, this may be learned from the report of the patient's friends. So, what he adds, you have to go to the past history from what physical disorder patient was suffering. You have to find it out exactly all those details. Take into consideration the list of disorders which prior the patient was having and what treatment he has consumed or she has consumed in, in that case. Because that is part and parcel of your totality. It is not only the present state which is the totality, but it is both the things, the past as well as present state, both gives you exactly the totality. And that's why it is too much necessary to take into consideration what what were the physical disorders or corporeal disorders which were pre prevalent before taking or before appearing this mental and emotional drama? There was one question. In this case, why this anxiety has developed is important. There, there were many things in our case. That, that, that is a big case, in fact. Two hours consultation, it shows many, many things in our life. So one of the time I will going to discuss all those cases whenever time permits. But at present, there it was a big history. Two hours consultation is a big history. She had many, many problems earlier in that case. Not only just a physical, but also a mental, psychological. And those were the causes of her present state of this. She was the lady who was ambitious. At the same time, she was the lady was having anxiety about the domestic problems. Both, both things were there. She was very ambitious. At the same time, she there, there was a conflict between her, uh, between her occupation and between her domestic life. And that problem, that confusion made her so sad and depressed. So that was the problem in that case. So in such types of cases, you have to take into consideration the past history of the patient. Even take into consideration the family history of the patient to understand exactly the miasmatic background. Miasmatic background gives you a clear idea about the understanding of the human nature and exactly the uh, remedy.
and that's why it is too important to go into the details of the past history as well as the family history of the patient. So, 280, where he explains that you have to take into consideration what were the physical disorders with which patient was suffering earlier. And then he turns toward the 219 and what he says in 219. A comparison of these previous symptoms of the corporeal disease with the traces of them that still remain, though they have become less perceptible, but which now sometimes become prominent, when a lucid interval and a transient elevation of psychical disease occurs, will serve to prove them to still present, though obscure. Lucid interval means what? Lucid interval is patient is free from the symptoms between two attacks of disease is called as lucid interval. So it is in between period the patient was free from the symptoms. So you, you, you must find it out such types of physical disorders which were present earlier which are obscured, not clearly present at time. But if they are in traces, you just take into consideration, ask details about them to the patient. If you find just a thread of it, ask the patient from what physical disorder you were suffering from and what treatment you have consumed. Because that itself is the, the one thing which was responsible to produce the present state of disposition of the mind. So this is which was transmitting from the physical disorder to the mental disorder. That, that's what happens in such types of cases. And it is so much of necessary to understand exactly the physical state with which patient was suffering or patient was ha having the problem earlier. And then last aphorism related with this first type of mental disease, which he explains over there, 220. By adding to this the state of disposition, state of mind and disposition, accurately observed by the patient's friends and by the physician himself, we have thus constructed the complete picture of the disease for which, in order to effect the homeopathic cure of the disease, a medicine capable of producing strikingly similar symptoms and especially an analogous disorder of the mind must be sought for among the, among the anti-soric remedy. Underline this. He is explaining you have to find it out remedy which is from anti-soric remedies. The remedy should not be acute enough, but should remedy should be deep enough to cover the whole mind. And if the psychical disease have already lasted some time. So when you get such a history, where you get the present state of disposition and mind, where you get the past history with which physical disorder which patient was suffering from, you get the family history, and you get the totality of the case. So after totality, you have to take into consideration the miasmatic background and accordingly, you have to find it out a remedy from that miasmatic course. It is, the, it is not just an acute remedy for the acute state of disposition, but a remedy which should be deep enough to cover the whole miasma. The acute remedy will may act sometimes palliative or many, many times it will never act in such types of cases. So to treat the first variety of mental diseases, you require a deep acting anti-miasmatic remedy. Hanneman explained the word anti anti sorry. I never says anti sorry because Sora was dominating prominent during Hanumanian time, and that's why seven eight cases were of and Sora sorry miasm, and that's why Hanuman explained the anti sorry. Today's present state, present era, is a era of mixed miasmatic traits, out of which the tubercular and cancer miasms are dominating. The sorosyphilitic or psychosyphilitic miasms are dominating. You have to take into consideration that miasmatic background and accordingly your remedy should be. So today's case, when I prescribe the sepia, sepia is the remedy from tubercular miasm. So you have to take into consideration the miasm. So depth of the remedy should match to the depth of the patient's disorder. Then and then, that remedy has the capacity to work at that specific site. 
if i would have choose just a remedy like ignatia or just a remedy like aconite arsenic it will not going to work in that case you have to match the whole thing the present situation the past situation the mathematical influence all things together and that gives you a right remedy from the specific miasm with which a patient presents and that remedy will be the patient's remedy in treating the first variety of mental disease so Hahnemann specifically mentions first variety of mental diseases he require he says antisoric remedy is required we can add over there according to the present era we can use any antimiasmatic remedy depending upon the miasm of the patient at that time so we have finished the four aphorisms and we have finished the first variety of mental diseases right from the aphorism number 215 to 220 so these are related with the first type of mental diseases on monday session we will going to learn the aphorism number 221 onwards the second variety or second type of mental disease so we get such types of many mental disorders psychological disorders in your practice because these disorders never have a com complete cure in allopathy we get many a times paranoid states paranoid schizophrenia and then here actually your intelligent should work your concentration should be there you should be a very good listener you should be a very good observer all things you have to take into consideration and then you have to decide about your remedy so a mental state of disposition along with miasm all matters a lot to find it out a right similimum in such types of cases so that's all for today tomorrow that is on monday we will going to learn about more about things yesterday because of some problem over here a severe noise was there it was difficult to conduct the session of uh, thursday session so it was not possible most probably if time permits i will do it on uh, sunday i will let you know exactly at what time on sunday i can do that i will explain it to you so thank you very much being there if any query is there we can have a discussion otherwise we can conclude today's session hello sir sir huh? uh, is juvenile arthritis uh, uh, completely cu uh, curable with homeopathy or there are recurrences in life no if if you get a right remedy and if if it recovers it recovers if if any precipitating factors happens it there might be a chance but they are very less generally if it has been cured completely you you should not leave that case immediately you have to treat it till it recovers completely you can cure them the patient which i have explained the case in last seminar about the juvenile arthritis he is completely recovered and never had a second attack of arthritis since last uh, december since december he never had again a problem yes sir pulsatile case no hmm pulsatile case yes that was pulsatile case yes yes okay thank you hello sir yes hello sir ha sir kai medicine tinhi myasm cover kartat जस ग्रेपाइटिस मध्ये सांगितलेलं आहे की सोरा सिफिलिस सायकोटिक त्यावेळेस आपण मग कसं कंसिडर करायला पाहिजे शुअरली यू हॅव टू टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन द डॉमिनेटिंग मायदम इफ यू कंसिडर द ग्रेपाइटिस ग्रेपाइटिस इज मेनली सोरिक सोरा इज डॉमिनेटिंग द सिफिलिटिक अँड सायकोटिक टेंट्स आर देयर सो इट डझंट मीन दॅट इट इज इट ओनली एव्हरी रेमेडी हॅज ऑल थ्री टेंट्स बट डॉमिनेटिंग मायदम इन ईच रेमेडी इज डिफरंट for example if you will take the lycopodium lycopodium is again antisoric hanemanian great antisoric but lycopodium more psychotic dominance is there along with so and that's why lycopodium they even though they are covered eyes they never wants to show it to the world that is the psychotic influence of lycopodium so every remedy has all three myasms but the dominating is different if you take into consideration the acid nitric 
it is psychosyphilitic remedy you have to take into consideration the physicals along with the mentors then you can understand the mayadam in a better manner if you go only with the mentors you cannot find it. because nitric acid it looks sympathetic so how can be a sympathetic person will be psychosyphilitic no that sympatheticness of lycopodium is absolutely a psychotic the sympatheticness of lycopodium is like that that if you are my friend i am sympathetic if you are my enemy i am the worst enemy so that is a psychotic or psychosyphilitic there is one rubric what is that rubric that hatred persons of unmoved by an apology in nitric acid he is so so vindictive that he never forgets what has happened in his life so you have to understand the remedy in core my suggestion to all of you those who are newcomers always read the sentence by sentence the matter remedy understand every if you read one first sentence of the borix matter remedy cup any remedy just understand it understand the mayadam behind there we understand where exactly it works where what is the place where it works what pathology it produces if you are able to catch that then then you will understand the depth of the remedy so three all three mayadams you will going to get with each and every remedy that that is truth but you have to find it out what is dominating in that case okay Anita will take definitely adenoid session whenever time permits. Till I will, I will take that during Jan on Thursday session anytime whenever time permits. Because just now I had okay, many sir. adenoid cases, many many adenoid cases. So we'll stop and we'll. finish the today session will meet again on the monday directly but if there is a lecture on yesterday's lecture if possible on uh, sunday i will perform that or otherwise next thursday thank you being there thanks a lot thank you sir thank you